Time for part 2 of this uh, repair video of this induction cooker. I found the two good IGBTs I will use in this unit. If you haven't watched the first part, there's a link up here, so you can click on, and the link in the description. So now let's plug in these two in the breadboard and see if they work properly. So I'm going to replace these two with those two, but first I'm going to test them. Maybe not the best way to test them. But it should be like this, both turns on and turns off. This is how they are supposed to work. Yes, let's replace them. This will be a bit problematic here. The ceramic plate is uh, broken. And yes, it doesn't go under the rectifier. The rectifier has its own uh, silicon uh, pad under it. So I think I need to put a silicon pad here as well and uh, maybe cut it here. Kind of. So yes, let's do that. I don't think you're supposed to cut it like this. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I cracked this part away now, uh, sandpapered away these uh, grooves that had happened when it shorted out. So I want to try to put two of these on the transistors and uh, maybe having some of these on the back side, just in case I have cracked these ones when I removed them from the previous transistors. And maybe I just want to put these ones in here. Just to make them run a little bit warmer. Now let's get this part here. How should I do this? Maybe we need to bend it somehow. F I will damage something. I will make it short out again. Maybe I should try to get them to bend them back a little bit. I will destroy my silicon soon doesn't work. I would have drilled some holes there, but I don't have any threading tool. I need to get this thing on uh, somehow. One way is to desolder all the components and uh, remove them and uh, of course putting these clips where it should be and put the transistors in underneath them. That's a bit easier, but I don't want to do that. I think I need to cut this in the middle, it's a bit easier to get it on, yes. Let's try that, cut this in the middle, maybe it's, maybe it's a bit easier to get it on there. Let's try now. I can have it in the middle now, actually. I need to get it down a little bit more. Now I remove the heat sink with the components. Let's see if it gets any better. Okay, now that's there. Let's put the transistor in there. I haven't got any vice to hold it in place. This will be a bit tricky. A big while later, they are in place. So yes, now they are in place. Let's solder them back together and uh, See if we can turn this induction cooker on. Now they are back in place. Now I have plugged into a single phase uh, power supply. So let's see what it does. Okay, let's put it in the isolation transformer. Explosion time. Nothing happened. Oh, we got some light here. Can I do this? It doesn't do anything. Not even exploding. Oh, here we go. Uh, I need a pot. So yes, here we got a pot with some water in it, so it doesn't overheat. So let's test it. Oh, just turned off. Let's test this big one first. Let's see if I plug the wires correctly. Nine is the maximum. Oh, it pulls two kilowatts. So have a look at the power meter. Is it going to turn it on again? Uh, 
that's a lot of power. The IGBTs will explode. Does that one work good? Let's try that one. That's good as well. And this one. Is that reheating maybe? One. We can crank up the power. Maximum, of course. That one is working. Let's see how this one is. That one we have, we have repaired. Maybe it blows up. Yes. Time for the truth. Heating mode. Nothing happens. Let's try full power. It pulls two kilowatts. Let's see if we can bring the water to a boil. Yes. Good as new. Let's do some oscilloscope measurements. I just did a little loop on this uh, probe here. Put it here. Like that. And it's on the reheating mode. You can see on the LED here, get some uh, wireless power. Put a little bit on the side here. It's gonna connect it to the highest power. Let's have a look at the oscilloscope. Here you can see it. The water is boiling. boiling. Turn down the power a little bit. You see the changing of the waveform. It looks like the same frequency. It will change the duty cycle a bit. The maximum power. What happens if I remove the pot? Now there's no pot there. You can see the LED blinking a little bit. It tries to find the pot here. The pot comes close. It detects that there's a bit more current running to the coil. But I'm not recommending you charging your wireless uh, phone with this. Now having a little bit more water in the pot now, I put the pot on the larger plate. So to turn it on, the maximum power. Fix the probe a little bit. Oh, I accidentally turned it off. Looks like a pretty good sine wave. How much is that? Two divisions and 20 microseconds. So the frequency should be around 25 kilohertz. Does it change when I decrease the power? Now it's the same frequency, the waveform gets smaller. And now it pulses.
Yes, now the induction stove works good as new. Hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.